So Sadhguru, did you start participating in yoga at a very young age? What do you mean when I was young? I'm a young man. When I was in the gym for about seven years, every day, I could run up a coconut tree. Who showed you this part? I told you I've been a worm. Maybe you're like totally free, free bird and... Hey, you know, bird has bird brain, huh? I got a human brain. <laughs> <laughs> A hungry man yeah. has no civilization, has no morality. Is that the world we want to create? Let's talk about organic farming. If the entire country goes into organic farming, our food production will come to twenty-five percent of what it is. How many people do you think will die out of that? Hi Sadhguru, uh, can you tell us about the place we are going to? Uh, we are going to the farm uh, where they are doing tree-based agriculture. Yeah, and uh, you can see how the land has improved in uh, just a few years. I see a lot of young people in the ashram. Only young people. Only young people. From childhood, I have heard people around me say that yoga and spirituality are things that you should pursue after your retirement or towards the end of your life. But at the Isha Foundation, I see so many young people. What is the reason behind this? Spirituality is not when you're no good for anything. It's uh, at the very beginning of your life, you must do it. But it is often said that we should live the material part of our life and explore spirituality at a much later stage. Yeah, that is because of the image that they've created of spirituality, that it is something that is anti-life. Tell me, uh, you can, uh, anything that you have, let's say your phone or your motorcycle, the more you know about it, the better you can ride it, isn't it? Why is that not true with your life? The more you know about this human mechanism, the better you can do it. Uh, Sadhguru, I had this one question in my mind for which I could never find an answer. It was, uh, when I used to watch Mahabharata, there was a saying uh, that, Everything is predestined and nobody can change what is destined ya fir vidhi ka vidhan koi nahi badal sakta. On the other hand, they would always say that life is in your hands. You should always work towards saying it is your karma. So I always find these two things as contradictory. No, no, no. Nobody said that. This is all losers. Losers in life explaining it like this. Does Krishna look like a loser? So in his uh, given context, he is doing everything possible. Well, uh, a lot of things didn't work out as he planned, but the thing is he did his best. So what do you have to say about teachings that say that everything is predestined? See, those things are said by losers who have nothing to show for their life. You don't want to accept your failures and do better. You want to explain your failures. Oh, explain it. You'll never know success in your life. So you mean everything is determined by karma? No, no, no. Karma means is your action. Yeah, when you say my life is my karma, you're saying my life is my making. This is the most dynamic way to exist. But now people have twisted it and made it a you karma. Karma is not uh, something that you inherit. Karma, karma is what you're doing right now. So what uh, life throws at you is not always your choice, but what you do with it or how you hit it is your choice. Right now there is a corner, that is the way it is, but uh, how you take the corner is entirely yours. Let's say somebody goes and crashes in this corner, now they say the corner was difficult, that's not the point, you didn't know how to take it, that's all it is. That's so with every aspect of life. 
That's what karma means. It's your doing. If you make it, it's you. If you don't make it, it's you. This is the only culture which has looked at life like this. Everywhere they are saying God is doing everything. If God is doing everything, why the hell are you here? So Sadhguru, did you start participating in yoga at a very young age? What do you mean when I was young? I am young man. You got older. I started uh, my yogic practices when I was 11, 12 years of age. And also by the time I was 14, 15, I was in the gym for about seven years every day. Besides yoga and flexibility, did you also do a lot of stuff like weightlifting and strength training and bodybuilding or going to the gym? Not that kind of gym. I made sure that I were very lithe, very strong. I could run up a coconut tree. Like that I was. So, so for me, strength and flexibility were more important than bulging muscles. So, I kept myself very fit. I also spent a lot of time in the gym working on myself. You don't have to... S you don't have to say it, I can see it. <laughs>
if you increase the organic content here hmm. to 8 to 10 percent, right now this may be around 3 to 4 percent. This is 3 to 4 percent? Yeah. 8 to 10 percent if you make it, your irrigation requirement will come down to 30 percent of what it is right now. That is, if you're using 100 liters of water, 30 liters will do the same job. If you raise it to 12 to 15 percent, 10 to 15 percent of water will do irrigation. So just imagine, 84 percent of India's water is used for agriculture. If you bring it down to even 20, 25 percent of what it is, there'll be ample water for everything. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are just plowing the land, leaving it open. This is like peel off the skin, stand in the sun, you'll be screaming. Yeah. Land is just screaming, people don't hear, that's all. So you're saying only solution is plant more trees? No, no, not only trees. There are many ways to do it. Okay. The important thing is, the ground should be not ripped open with plowing and left open to the sun. Something should be there. There should be grasses, there should be a crop, there should be some photosynthesis happening. Mm -hmm. So this leaf has come not just from the trees. They put cover crops and just chop it and put it right back okay, here. Okay, okay, okay. So with this, the yields have gone up significantly. For farmers, within, uh, let's say, five to seven years, many farmers are earning 300 to 800 percent more income. You must see, this is a small farm, it's a recent one. These are all just five, six-year-olds. You must uh, enter a farm which is 10, 15 years old. The water table has come up, soil organic content has gone up, the nutrient level in the food has gone up significantly. They're getting a much better m price in the marketplace. And above all, the farmer is earning 300 to 800 percent more. I have a question. <laughs> uh, it, it used to be, I'm saying, it, it was supposed to be 8 to 10 percent, whatever. We have, by our own ways, made it down to 3 percent, 4 percent. But no, it, no, it, not 3 percent, 4 percent. In India, 62 percent of India's soil organic content is below 0.5 percent. So you're saying agricultural land or...? Agricultural land. Huh. It's right. gone below 0.5 percent. That means we're on the verge of desertification. How many years we have? According to the UN, in the entire world, there's only 60 to 80 harvests left. That is anywhere between 45 to 60 years max. So By 2045, know? it's expected we'll be producing 40 percent less food than what we're doing right now. And our populations will be More. over 9 billion, 9.2 billion. That's not a world you want to live in. You have two children, they will be in that world if you don't turn it around now. But the question was, let's say uh, 200 years back or 300 years back, it, the content was okay for... See, uh, I'm telling you, not even that far away. Even 50, 60 years ago, there was no farm in this country without trees and animals. Now, trees are gone, animals are gone. So my, that's why my question is, if everybody knows that... That's, that they knew, more, not that they know, benefits. they knew. They knew. Now we've forgotten. But why have we forgotten? If, 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 if this is a more because, better way see, to... See, it's like this. You're eating good food and you're doing well. The doctor checks you up and says, uh, well, your calcium is not good enough, your vitamin B12 is not good enough, your iron is not good enough, and gives you three pills for a month, two months, six months, something. You took these pills and you felt really good. Then you decided, I don't really have to eat it, I just have to multiply the pills. Instead of three, I will take thirty pills. That's what we did to the land. We put little fertilizer, everything burst out. We thought, this is it. And farmers were adv advised like this. Mm, that's true. Do you think that happened during the Green Revolution? Yes, it did. But uh, we must also understand and appreciate why that was done. See, India was a country which was suffering with famines. Yes, yes, yes. Millions of people used to die. We were importing, we were importing wheat. Not only that, every other year there was famine, okay? So famines means in 1942 famine, over three, three million people died. So... This used to be the reality of this country. To offset that, to bridge that somehow, then we went into green revolution. So it is like you're unwell, you took some pills and you got well, but then you should have improved your nourishment. But you just started taking only pills thinking it'll make you well. Those same pills are making you sick now. So we are not against fertilizer, not against pesticide, not against anything. The important thing is, organic content should be there because first thing is, 
Right now, we are consuming the soil of the unborn child. Yes. We are eating up the future's soil. So, putting life back into this is the most important thing. I, I, I read somewhere that you should leave the planet, if not better... At least the way. In the At same least way, the way it came to you. UK, it came to you or you received it from your ancestors. But we are degrading the planet and then giving it to us. Super degrading it. I'm saying just imagine. Just imagine. Where are you from? Where you live? Mumbai? Huh? Uh, no, Delhi. Delhi. Delhi, Kanpur. In, uh, okay, Delhi, Kanpur, wherever. In your city, suppose forty percent less food is available in the shop. Not that you don't have money to buy. There is no food, forty percent less food. That means forty percent of the people are not eating enough or they have no food to eat. What do you think will happen to your city? Chaos. What kind of chaos do you think? The poor will die, they will not get food. Really? You think they'll die? No, no, when they see you a well-built guy like you, they'll slaughter you. Yeah. That's not the way it's going to happen. A hungry man yeah. has no civilization, has no morality, has no humanity left in him, isn't it? All times. We'll, we'll push the world in that direction. Today, UN agencies are predicting by 2035, there'll be dozens of civil wars in the world. Is that the world we want to create? But right now, if we act, we can turn this around in the next 12 to 15 years' time. Another question, I was working on this project of rainwater harvesting. I went around with gel boards of different cities. But then there is a problem Sadhguru. See, my videos are, are watched by people around 25 to 30 years of age. Now, the best solution I could give them was, it was costing them 50 to 55,000 rupees to build uh, a system for rainwater harvesting on their roof so that <laughs> you can replenish. But then they are saying, we don't have 50 to 50,000 rupees to spend. The problem, why it fails, we make a video, people watch it, yes, there's a problem, they will say, Sadhguruji is right. No, 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 I but, don't but, give but, such... But, I don't but, give no. that kind of solutions ever. So what, what... Here I'm saying, this is not an ecological plan for the farmer. For the farmer, this is an economic plan, mm. but it has an ecological impact. So everything ecological we do is like this, it's an economic plan, because if it's not an economic plan, it'll anyway not succeed, okay? They must make money out of it, then only it'll succeed and then only it'll sustain. Okay, even if I had fifty thousand, fifty-five thousand or one lakh rupees, I spent it today. Will I spend it every year, whatever is needed? No. It can only sustain if this becomes economically very good for me, isn't it? So this is about marrying economy and ecology. Otherwise, there will be no success at all. So you're saying farmers who are on the ground working on their fields, they should bring this change or you no, want a no, government policy no. change? Policy change is a must because... See, today this farm is good. This is one generation of people. Because we have worked with them, they have made their farms like this. But let's say next generation comes, they may do their own thing. For you to see an example, for example, you live in Delhi. The new Delhi is built in a certain way because if you have, let us say, 10,000 square feet of land, you can't build a 10,000 square foot building. Hmm. You build six, seven thousand, allow some space for yourself, your neighbor, this is the law. You cannot do it. If you do more, they'll come and knock it down. Yes. But just go to old Delhi and see. There's no concept of a window. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One door entry, one door out, all sides there are more homes. There is no possibility of a window, all right? Is that the way to build a building? That happened when there was no law. So right now, if you have twenty-five acres of land, you can plow every inch of it and turn it into a desert in the next ten, fifteen years' time. Nobody will ask you, why are you doing such a damaging thing? Because there's no law. We need a law that if you own agricultural land, you must have minimum three to six percent. This is minimum to keep the soil alive. If you don't live well, that's up to you. But you can't snatch away life from future generations right now, because once soil is gone, there's no life left. Eight... Uh, in that case, farmers would, uh, would say that, you know, they would earn less, they are already earning less. Are, I'm but... telling you, they're earning three hundred to eight hundred percent more. Hmm. This is wrong education that we've given them, right? Hmm. right? Tell me, if the soil is rich, will you earn less or more? More. If the soil is rich, will you commit suicide? No. 300,000 farmers have committed suicide in India.
if the soil was rich, even if they don't have money, if they can grow food for himself and his family, will he kill himself? No. Then why are we not looking at it? In United States today, in the last twelve years, fifty percent of the farmers have not seen a single dollar, okay? And the highest suicide rate among all professions is among the farming community. It's not just in India. This is because there is no strength in the soil. The, your costs are going on because every year you have to keep on increasing the dosage yeah, yeah. of fertilizer and everything else. So costs are just rising by the year, they're not able to ta bear that. Otherwise, if you raise the food prices, other people will complain because inflation, they can't handle it. So, the important thing is soil has to be rich. Soil should be alive because first twelve to fifteen inches of soil is the source for eighty-seven percent of life on this planet. When you're born, you come out of it. When you live, you eat out of it. When you die, you go back to it. This is the only magical place in the universe, not on the planet, where if you sow death into it, it bursts out with life. Tell me one other place like this. Let's make it happen, huh? Save soil. But it Call is going to take at least two to three years of transition period, where farmers will learn less because... No, no, why? Straight away from why the next harvest, they will learn more? See, because in your head it is stuck, you must do organic farming. This organic farming is a crime committed by urban people. Let's talk about organic farming because no, no, we pay so much to get organic No, farmers. no, I am not saying it's not good. I am saying you never worked on the land, so suddenly you declare organic farming. Right now, if the entire country goes into organic farming, without fertilizer, without pesticide, without any of those things, our food production will come to twenty-five percent of what it is. How many people do you think will die out of that? Sadhguru, that's what exactly I want to ask, ki how to bring this change? I am telling you, institute it in the policy first. Mm -hmm. If you… like in the city, there is a law. If you build a house, there must be so much ventilation, so much space, whatever. Similarly, if you own an agricultural land, minimum three to six percent organic content should be there. If that is there, you will use a certain amount of chemicals and stuff to grow. But if you increase the organic content to let's say six percent to eight percent or ten percent, then your fertilizer and everything will come down, your input cost will come down. Well, you may take two, three years to make this enrichment, but that also can be offset very quickly, within a year you can do it, if the government is willing to give some subsidy for enrichment of soil. You understand? Right. See, in Tamil Nadu, we promoted this in the last twenty-four, twenty-five years. I've been telling the farmers, ten percent of your land should be trees which will provide foliage for the remaining ninety percent. Mm. If you don't invest that ten percent, then everything will die. Now, if you invest that ten percent, you think you're earning less? No. In the remaining ninety percent, you earn much more than what you were earning with uh, full hundred percent. But we are not saying don't use fertilizer. As the soil becomes richer, the use of fertilizer will naturally go down. So we are not anti anything, okay? This is not don't use fertilizer, don't do... These are things are said by urban people who have never done farming. Farming is a heartbreaking job. Once uh, there is no necessary, you know, uh, inputs to do that. See, you don't have to do agriculture like it's some kind of a philosophy or a religion. This is not what you believe in. This is about making a practical solution out of this. I'm just saying don't cut the golden goose, if I have to say it very simply. Wait for the eggs to come. <laughs> but it, it is scary to listen to the timelines to what you have told, told us. See, right now, desert. we are partnering with UNCCD, that's a agency, UN agency for combating desertification. Desertification is the biggest problem in the planet right now. Nobody is talking about it because there is no money in it. Everybody is talking about fossil fuels, automobiles, coal, this one, that one, because if you knock industry, it spills dollars. Here you can't go and knock anybody, you have to spend your life to make it happen. Exactly. To convert about hundred and twenty-five thousand farmers to, to tree-based agriculture in Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, twenty-five years of our life is gone in this. With no reward? Not that there's no reward. No, to the people who are volunteering. Uh, no, they don't look for a reward, they want to do it. What's a reward? We're alive and we're happy, that's a reward.
<laughs> what other reward is there in life? You want a crown? <laughs> it's a very uncomfortable damn thing to wear, just know that. <laughs> Can you imagine a metal ring on your head? I always used to wonder that in, in, you know, in our epic... Uh... It's a terrible thing to wear. <laughs> it is shown it is of gold. My See, right now you're wearing a helmet, it's properly cushioned, everything. Yes, yes. That only irritates you after some time. After some time yeah, just a like metal it. ring, metal ring, you put it on your head and walk around. That's the silliest thing to do. So we are not looking for a crown. <laughs> it's rich with life, it's reverberating the land. That's how it should be. <laughs> Sadhguruji, uh, where do you do so much research? Do you read? No, no, I don't uh, do Does any research. I'm not ah. talking about ah. what you tell about spirituality, life, but... No, even the soil, the soil reeds, this is because, reeds. you know, for six and a half decades I've lived on this planet. Others don't live on this planet, they live in their head. I don't have anything in my head, so I live on the planet, I'm like a worm. You ask a worm, it knows what is the soil condition, isn't it? Do you think the worm in this soil knows more about this soil than a scientist? It cannot tell us. Uh, this worm can speak, that's the only <laughs> difference <laughs> That worm also speaks, you're not understanding a language <laughs> Yes, maybe <laughs> But it is strange to see that what is affecting our life, what is affecting our children, we are not... Because see, nobody... I mean, even when I heard about... Uh, I was talking to Swamiji, he told me about all that... Uh, the, the desert, it's gonna turn into desert and the fruits and the vegetables itself, if the, if the soil doesn't have any nutrition, they will it have nothing. nutrition. See, right now it's a fashion to eat salads in America. Yeah, but for example, <laughs> all right, you, you, you eat salad, you've been eating a buffalo <laughs> So, in California especially, it's very fashionable. But one important item, this is the only thing which has been studied. If you study everything, it'll all come out. Lettuce, for example. Okay. It has only ten percent of the nutrition it had hundred years ago. In 1920, if you ate it, what you got, Today you're getting ninety percent less. You're eating trash. This is what we've done to our food. If you ate one orange in nineteen twenty, today you will have to eat eight oranges to get the same thing. Can you eat eight oranges? Even you can't eat. But then people in nineteen twenty must be starving. Hmm? <laughs> you can't... Uh, the amount of food you eat, the amount of space you have in the stomach, you need... Some. No, if the food is rich, you don't need that much quantity. Right now, people are eating much more than what they should eat because it lacks nourishment. I thought it is because of the volume, it satisfies the hunger. No, no, that is also there. See what level of activity, physical activity people were putting in 1920. Yes, that I and what level of activity you're putting now is not even ten percent. Right. Everything had to be done with your body, all right? Now we have machines. So... We can think it's, it's like, uh, you know, in the petrol, whether you want to ride with a uh, hundred octane or you want to ride with fifty octane, uh, it's a big difference. <laughs> so, uh, you know what happened, uh, Guru? Uh, one day I was flying with an, another captain, even I'm a captain. Oh, you're also a pilot. Yeah, I'm also a pilot. Uh, I'm uh, with Indigo Airlines. Mm -hmm. So, he told me about uh, you and one day I was on labor and then I actually tried to do Isha Kriya, although I failed at it, but yes. Um, then I started following your videos and your ideology, so... I have no ideology, huh? Well, uh, not exactly ideology, but... Um, Simply life sense, huh? Anji life sense. <laughs> but yes, uh, like my father uh, tells me this every time, see? Like as a child needs a teacher to, uh, you know, guide in a certain way. So you, uh, my father told me that a person needs Somebody, I mean, a per, like for See, me, it's you. Flying an airplane, hmm. such a simple damn thing. If you just pull it, it'll fly. Sure. But if there was no trainer, you think you would have? You would exactly. be dead probably, <laughs> isn't it? Exactly. That's that's what my father tells me. Any unknown terrain, if you want then, to walk. Sadhguru, the question comes that okay, if so many people follow you. You are the trainer who shows them the path. Who showed you this path? I told you, I've been a worm. I lived on this planet, absorbed life. No, but I've I've seen so many of his videos. He never answers this question. <laughs> He's always. <laughs> Do I look like I was trained by somebody? 
No, I don't know how a mask. No, no, just, just tell me, looking at me. <laughs> I don't feel like. I feel like that. Maybe you're like totally free, free bird. And hey, bird has bird brain. I don't tell. Call me a bird. <laughs> Huh? I got a human brain. <laughs> yep. Because the soil has micro microorganisms, right? It has more nutrition. Definitely, it has. <laughs> really? Those neat-looking agriculture lands, lines and lines. They are not good lands. Unfortunately, we have advertised like that, that's how land should look. No, this is how it should look, full of vegetation. Farmers living a quiet, nice life. Mm. With a house, family settled, both his children are well educated now, all from the farm. But Sadhguruji, you know, she's from Haryana, a farming background. But the main problem is, everyone is sending their kids to cities. They don't want them to be part of Unfortunately, yeah. Even uh, for a... We have made some kind of a rudimentary survey. Not even two percent of the farmers want their children to become farmers. And even for... they want... Yes, if that is a thing, just imagine in twenty-five years if this generation passes, where is the food security for this country? Are you taking the same bike to ride in Europe? Europe, I'm riding a GT. 1600. Arabia, I'm riding this. From Tel Aviv to Oman, I'm riding this.